questions for Mr. Viswanathan uh, that he could answer within just a few words. Uh, the first one is, uh, Mr. Viswanathan, I asked this question last year. It's May 18th. Where is the state's comprehensive annual financial report for June 30th, 2019? So on the CAFR, I would have to check with our office and also with the state controller's office. We'll make a note to check in on that. That'd be great. We're one of three states that still haven't finished their CAFRs. Number two, you said at the beginning, once in a century, uh, what does that mean? Is that just a descriptor or are you anticipating a short blip in the economy or, or was, just curious in a couple words what that meant? Sure, just to keep it brief, uh, definitely not uh, treating this as a blip. And I think with the revenue projections, not only the $54 billion gap uh, for this incoming budget, but the structural gaps that we need to address in the coming years. Uh, this is an economic crisis. I think uh, when I refer to once in a century, I uh, refer to it in two ways. I think number one, the fact that this is caused by a pandemic and a lot of people make the analogy to the flu of 1918, you know, in the early part of the 20th century. So that was uh, exactly a century ago. Uh, and then the second thing I think is we'll see how the road to recovery is, uh, but these levels of unemployment have not been seen in well over half a century. You'd have to go back to the time of the Great Depression. For example, in the Great Recession 10 years ago, which itself, uh, as many of you mentioned, you lived through that as legislators or as other uh, elected officials, uh, that was a huge economic crisis. And even there, we saw unemployment levels peak at a little bit over 12%. And in this recession, we're seeing unemployment levels that will exceed that by several percentage points. So we have been watching the economy over the last few years improve. And so we've been able through uh, Prop 98 to give more money to our school districts. But at the same time, their Cal STRS contributions have been rising. So they really, at the end of the day, their delta has been rather minimal. So if this is one of the biggest economic um, recessions, depressions in, in a century, isn't this time to do some improvements to systemic problems at the state like the pension plans? Could we do a, like a, def, a shared risk plan that the state of Wisconsin has implemented? And they always show up as being 100% funded, at least historically for the last few years when the Pew report comes out every year. Is this an opportunity now to, to say, hey, let's avoid further problems because a year or two or three or four from now, we're going to have much larger pension plan contributions. How do we, why don't we start doing something now, like uh, PEPRA in, in 2012? So the, the budget, uh, the May revision uh, uh, does not include any of the specific types of changes uh, that you mentioned. That being said, we are aware of the fiscal pressures that the state is under, uh, and not just the state, but school districts uh, when it comes to some of these rising costs. And that's one of the reasons why uh, for schools, we not only allocated uh, $4 billion in federal funding for K-12 schools for the upcoming year, but also uh, included uh, reallocating supplementary money that the governor, uh, working with the legislature, had taken out of the surplus last year uh, and making sure that that buys down some of the school's pension contributions in the next year and in the year after that. But we recognize that uh, this is an issue uh, of these costs that uh, schools will be dealing with uh, for some time to come, and we want to make sure that they have the resources that they need. Can we uh, negotiate and modify retiree medical plans? So I think all I can say right now is uh, those considerations are not directly part of the governor's mayor revision. High-speed rail. So when it comes to high-speed rail, uh, the governor uh, had set out uh, his plans, recognizing some of the issues with high-speed rail at the beginning of his administration last year. Uh, the uh, funding for high-speed rail comes from a number of different sources. It comes from federal funds. It comes from the bonds that were approved uh, by the voters 12 years ago. And it comes from continuous appropriations from the cap and trade program. And when it comes to that last element, uh, as the discussion uh, with Senator Wachowski showed, uh, the cap and trade program uh, revenues uh, are projected or looks like they will uh, fall in the coming year. Um, so all of the programs that are funded by the cap and trade program will see reduced revenue. And then that cap and trade money could, instead of going to high-speed rail, could go to hardening assets 
uh, so that we can reduce wildfires. Uh, that's just a, a comment. Uh, what about uh, MOUs? We're, we're showing 604 million uh, in more state employee pay and benefit raises. Will those be renegotiated or, or maybe put on hold? So I'll make one comment here, and then I think my colleague, Mary Halterman, uh, is on the line as well. The budget reflects, uh, uh, reflects employee savings of, I believe, 10 percent uh, of employee savings across uh, state employees, um, and we expect to negotiate those at the bargaining table to achieve those savings. Uh, but I'll turn it over to Mary Halterman. To oh, that's, that's okay. That, that's fine. I want to keep this real brief. How about the uh, minimum wage? We're doing that every year as an increase, and that affects IHSS. Will we, will we put that on maybe a temporary hold, or what are we doing with the minimum wage? So right now, the budget reflects uh, a scheduled increase in the minimum wage next year. Uh, some of the programs, like you mentioned, IHSS, are facing cuts in other areas that are pretty significant, uh, but the, the May revision reflects a scheduled increase in the minimum wage. Uh, FICMAT, the Fiscal Crisis Management and Assistance Team uh, historically, for school districts that are having trouble, would uh, loan money. Uh, we've already mentioned LAUSD. Uh, they have an unrestricted net deficit of almost $20 billion. If they even borrowed half of that, where would the state be able to, to loan $10 billion to LA Unified? I'd have to check back on that specific issue uh, to follow up with you. We're, we're uh, budgeting $22 million for AB5 enforcement. I'm wondering, what's the goal there, are we trying to penalize tax preparers or, or, or are we, is that a revenue source? And that seems anti-business. How does, how does GoBiz feel about this budget allocation? So I haven't checked with GoBiz specifically. I think uh, generally uh, the governor you know, checked in with all the members of his administration uh, as he put together the budget and we here at the Department of Finance supporting him. Specifically for that allocation for AB5 enforcement, uh, that was a bill that was enacted by the legislature last year and signed by the governor. Uh, so these are resources to enforce this law that is already on the books. And then last question, uh, one in five people in California, as you pointed out, are, on, are collecting unemployment benefits. Uh, that's in the private sector. Do we know how many are unemployed in the public sector and what, what can we anticipate? I have not seen direct layoff data uh, or other unemployment data when it comes to the public sector. Certainly the reports that we've been seeing uh, across the nation uh, show already that different jurisdictions in different parts of the country are beginning to cut. Uh, I think as we've seen in this hearing, a lot of people are looking uh, to Congress to see what kind of aid comes through because um, if Congress does not come through with additional aid, I think you'll likely see different layoffs um, across the country and in different parts of the state. Uh, but when it comes to specific data and what that level is, uh, I don't have the information for that right now. Mr. Visponathan, I always appreciate your direct responses and uh, your professionalism. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Madam Chair.